In the headlines, Supreme Court dismisses injunction application against implementation of e-levy. GJA reacts to Ghana's drop in world press freedom ranking and suggests it is not an irreversible situation. We will show you a footage of how a vehicle somersaulted several times last Monday at Laboni in Accra and the occupants were thrown out for not wearing safety belts. We take you to Memphis in the United States where the Asante Notun for say to the second has arrived with an entourage to represent Ghana at the International Festival of Memphis in May, which is this year saluting Ghana. And Cabinet has approved a national policy for aflactosin control in food and feed. There is a pending case at the Supreme Court against the constitutionality of the passage of the e-levy. Before the determination of the substantive case, the applicants who are three members of parliament also applied to the Supreme Court for an injunction to be placed on the implementation of the levy from May 1st. But at the Supreme Court today, the injunction application filed by the minority leader, Haruna Idrisu, Mahama Yarga and Samuel Kujetua Blakwa was dismissed. In a unanimous decision, a seven-member panel of the APS court held that irreparable damage will be caused to the public if the implementation of the e-levy is put on hold and a substantive case challenging its constitutionality fails. The court has, however, ordered the Ghana Revenue Authority to keep records of the levy collector so far so that in the event of the substantive case succeed, it can refund the money back to the public. We are very happy with the performance of uh, our lawyers. We only pray that Ghana is not going to have two sets of laws. One that serves and protects the elected elites of a ruling government and one that serves the political minority of an opposition. The problem for taking a decision now is 137. And therefore, in applicants themselves is content that perhaps 137 members of parliament have approved the eleven bill. For me, it's, it's actually um, goes to buttress my, my point that yes, the eleven bill was already approved. Ghana has dropped in the World Press Freedom Index from the 60th position in 2021 to 30th in 2022. In Africa, Ghana has moved from the third position to the tenth in the rankings compiled by Reporters Without Borders. At the commemoration of the World Press Freedom Day in Accra today, the Ghana Journalists Association reacting to the drop said it did not expect Ghana's decline to be an irreversible situation. The outgoing president of the GJA, Roland Athelmoni, speaking on behalf of the GJA, called for the passage of the broadcasting bill to help address challenges pertaining to the ownership of media. He suggested that the arrest, reckless attacks and disregard for the rights of a number of journalists in line of duty has resulted in a sharp deterioration of the safety of journalists in Ghana, thus the decline. And to some sad news, a video footage of an accident that happened last Monday at the Laboni Junction in Accra has been shared on social media. It shows a black Range Rover vehicle skidded off the road between Laboni Junction and Dankwa Circle. The video also depicts how some occupants of the vehicle, who are suspected not to have been wearing their safety belts, were thrown out of the vehicle as it somersaulted in the median and landed with the wheels looking up.
Oh, what's that guy? From Accra, we take you to Memphis in Tennessee in the United States where the Asante Hinotun for Say to the Second has arrived with an entourage to represent Ghana at the International Festival of Memphis in May, which is this year saluting Ghana. The Asante Hini arrived to a massive welcome in the city of Memphis on Tuesday evening to participate in the Memphis in May International Festival, which is being held to honor Ghana. The week-long festival is dubbed Salute to the Republic of Ghana. Graphic Online's Kwame Asari Boydu, who is traveling with the Asante Hini, reports that wearing a dark ash suit and beaming with smiles, Otunfo touched down at the Wilson Air Center at 7.18 p.m., where he was met by the mayor of Memphis, Jack Strikeland. The Asante Hene was presented with a bouquet by little Gabby Josiah, a grade two pupil. A number of Ghanaians living in Tennessee were also at the airport to welcome Otunfo. After the brief welcoming event, the king was driven in a motorcade to his hotel. The Memphis in May International Festival is the largest annual international festival in Tennessee and was founded in 1977 to celebrate the culture and the citizens who laid down their lives to build the glory of the city. The festival has since grown in several dimensions to incorporate the international community. Each year, the organizers devote the festival to honor a particular country and its fell on Ghana this year. And at the Meet the Press series in Accra today, it was announced that Cabinet has approved a national policy for aflatoxin control in food and feed. The policy, which was approved last year, is aimed at protecting human and animal health and increasing incomes of food value chain actors by reducing aflatoxin contamination in food and feed. The Minister of Environment, Science, Technology and Innovation Dr. Kwekwe Fuye, who made this known, explained that the ministry collaborated with the ministries of food and agriculture, trade and industry and health to develop the national policy for aflatoxin control. Aflatoxin contamination was rife in Ghana and should Ghana produce grains in large quantities for exports, most could be contaminated leaving very few to qualify for exports. Aflatoxins are any class of toxic compounds produced by certain modes found in food which can cause liver damage and cancer. At the same Meet the Press series, Dr. Efriye revealed that the ministry has also secured approval for $7 million to co-finance a project with the Global Environmental Facility to develop a framework for circular economy in plastic waste management. The circular economy concept refers to making use of plastics as a resource and moving away from a situation where plastics are used once and discarded to a system where the products are designed from the onset to ensure circularity in usage. We want to develop a circular economy. And again, it is not only plastics. When you go to the countryside, you see that a lot of material are being recycled. Your tomato things, your uh, sardine things are being collected. They are under my ministry. We are trying to match the capacity of the plastic being imported and manufactured in country with the capacity of the recycling industries. And we take you back to last Monday where former President John Dramani Mahama delivered a public lecture on the topic Ghana at the Crossroads, where he teased out what he said were various challenges bedeviling the country and went ahead to provide solutions that government could consider to help change the state of the country. Mr. Mahama said an NDC government in 2025 will repeal the Electronic Transfer Act, which he described as a distortionary and burdensome tax. He said the government's desperation to tax Ghanaians will not succeed because the government's own budget proposals shows that the E-Levy will not make any significant contribution in resolving Ghana's problems. Government's desperation to tax Ghanaians to get this nation out of the hellhole it has dumped us will not succeed because government's own budget proposals show that the E-Levy will not make any significant contribution in resolving our problems. We in the NDC do not oppose taxation as a principle. We will not be pretentious and couch fanciful slogans to condemn the principle of taxation like the MPP did in the past. We are, however, implacably opposed 
to distortionary and burdensome taxes like the e-levy. A new National Democratic Congress government, God willing, and with the votes of the sovereign people of Ghana in 2025. The Fixing the Country movement has responded to former President Mohammed's lecture. The founder of the pro-new patriotic party group, Ernest Ousu Bempa, has this to say at a press conference in Accra today. The fundamental truth here is that the former president, John Dramani Mahama, is not an alternative to solve Ghana's problems. The man doesn't even have a single solution to the country's problem. Mahama is just a desperate leader who wants to rule the country again, hence his penchant of making false claims of having all answers to the country's problems. It is a trait knowledge that Mr. Mahama lost 2016 election due to his mismanagement of the country's economy, which resulted in worsening pride of the ordinary Ghanaian people. News in Brief was brought to you by Graphic News Plus. Download your Graphic News Plus now and choose your preferred package daily, weekly, monthly and annually and access free news on various interest areas as well. Graphic News Plus, connecting people through news. Thank you for watching. Stay safe and protect yourself from COVID-19. For more news, visit graphic.com.gh or log on to Facebook at Daily Graphic and on YouTube at Graphic GH.